And hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, the, the March edition of Post Perez here at PostWrestling.com. And uh, my oh my, the, the, the year is going by fast. Next thing you know, it it'll be April and I'll be in Philadelphia enjoying some Waffle House. <laughs> uh with my good friend rich fan from mcu later and uh but we're still we're, we're in march and we're gonna talk about a lot about a lot of things happening in the in the japanese professional wrestling scene i'm wh park aka the merch king as uh <laughs> denoted by uh one dicky bird over at choptees.com which by the way is where you can find this bad boy that's uh, those are some very swish threads there sir Yes, and you they they just put out the zip hoodie in white, which looks amazing. I'm gonna I'm gonna get the zip the white zip hoodie. I don't normally wear white, to be quite honest with you, Karen, but I might I, I think I'm gonna get this one, this uh this zip hoodie for MCU later. But joining me as as people who are watching this on YouTube will 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 know is is the Empress of Post Wrestling, Karen Peterson, who by the way, we, we have to we have to <laughs> throw this out here uh th this is of course the you know this is canadian prices it'll be a bit different for if you're in the united states or, or the united kingdom you'll you'll get your localized currency but the uh, we manifested it karen we you did know? we made it happen uh i actually not only have had a couple of sales from here in the united states one has made its way all the way to england and another one is on its way to australia so i am very thankful for everyone who supported well, me so far then i just have to say one thing to all my <laughs> fellow canadians is you need to get your sh your shit in order and, and start ordering some empress uh merchandise which you can find over at uh chop tees uh chop uh hyphen tees.com and and Karen has her own brand. I am part of Post Wrestling, so it's under my stuff is all under Post Wrestling. Uh, but Karen has her own brand. She's very much like you know our good friends over at Poison Rana and 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 WrestleNomics and and and. But yes, we we it, it happened. Karen, people thought I was joking. <laughs> you people made thought, it happen. But you know what? You know who listened? The most important person li li listened, and that was Richard, my good friend Richard Avian, aka Dicky Bird, and and he contacted hey, you. He contacted you and said, "Let's make this shit happen, right?" Yeah, and, uh, I, I could not believe it, and we got to do not just navy blue for because I am very much I have a closet full of black T-shirts for wrestling shirts, and I was I refused to issue a single black t-shirt. Wow. I wanted, I want color, I want coordination. So for those who want a dark color shirt, I live in Florida, you wear anything that is a dark color shirt, you roast in it. So navy blue is as close to black as you're going to get. Um, but we also have options that are available in pastels and All white. Right. So the light blue is part of the permanent collection. And there you go, well, there's a light blue. There is the light there. blue. There's also white because again, I live in Florida. It's hot. Um, but yes, I wanted colors that would really make it stand out. And probably by the time this goes live, it won't be available anymore because it was only a two week limited to drop. But there was the debut of Orchid because I told I told Dicky I wanted pastels, and he said, "Let's try a limited edition." And yeah, it's cozy. You know, there, it's, if, it's perfect for spring. What do you there's do? enough demand. Maybe he'll bring Orchid back. I mean, because if there's be... one thing that that Mr. Bird is is not adverse to, it's making money. So I mean, <laughs> you know I'm not a, in this economy. I'm not adverse to making money either. But go. should 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 the uh, the Orchid ever choose to come back, maybe it'll be my February release, Galentine's Valentine's Day to you know, well, not leap year because leap year's not gonna be another four for another four years. But today, it is the the last day. Listen, before you know it, four years has gone by. You know what I'm saying? Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to think where I'm going to be in four years. Well, Are we still going to be doing this four years from now, WH? You know what? I can't promise anything. <laughs> I can't promise anything. Hopefully, oh, hopefully crazy. someone's hopefully someone's fucking doing this show. Is it me? <laughs> Is it you? Who knows? Who knows? You know who it won't be? Bren from New Jersey. What? Just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm not. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, don't worry. He's he'll be okay. He'll be okay. All right. But um, we do have a lot to talk about. Uh, we do on this on this episode. It, it's and, been a uh, month. <laughs> it's been a month. And um, 
we're gonna we're gonna talk about some uh some happenings in the world of joshi pro wrestling and including um the hanakimura uh, memorial show that will be happening in may uh, we're going to talk about uh, stuff happening in stardom particularly the cinderella tournament we're going to move into some uh new japan talk as well as some all japan talk and uh yeah we're gonna you know what we're gonna end with new japan we're gonna we're gonna go from like joshi stardom into into uh all japan <laughs> <laughs> oh, and we're also talking about some I felt was really good news with about the 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 Russell Universe uh, uh, streaming platform, which I think made a, a wonderful decision. But we'll, we'll 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 save that as we as we move along in our cheats. But and, and Karen also, you know, Karen's got all these other notes that that uh, you know look much more professional than than <laughs> what I make it what I make in Notepad and I send to her in, in via via our emails. But, I'm glad you're uh, not doing it in Twitter DMs anymore because copying and pasting it was always my the bane of my yes. existence. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize <laughs> for that. But uh, <laughs> let, let, let's let's start. So uh, in in the world of Joshi, one of the big news that came out recently was that uh, Kyoko Kimura, the the mother of the the uh, late Hana Kimura, announced that she will be having an, another Hana Kimura memorial show uh, in 2024 at for uh, the date of May 23rd at Cork and Hall. It's called, uh, forgive me if I pronounce this incorrectly, Tarima uh, Kasi. Is that, is, you think that sounds right? Uh, looking at the katakana, it's a Teruma Kasi. So um, it, I don't speak Indonesian. So, but the katakana, ver it's like, it's like the katakana, the Japanese version of Indonesian. So it's like three layers of language that I, I am fairly certain I'm going to pronounce it incorrectly. Well, well apparently, the, uh, I'll just say Teruma Kasi. And hopefully I'm, I'm not butchering it. I apologize if I am. Uh, it's the Indonesian word meaning thank you, but it can also kind of be translated into, yes, I, I received your love. And, oh my uh, God. and it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's, uh, I think I'm going to go with the latter because I think it, it probably encapsulates yeah. a lot of like what, you know, Kyoko Kimura still feels for, for, for her daughter. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's going to be a it's going to be a pretty big show. Participants include a lot of people from the the independent Joshi scene. Um, who who's on this show so far that we know about, Karen? Uh, participants right now include uh, uh, Sendai Girls Dash Chisako, Triple uh, Six is Ram Kaicho and Yuko Miyamoto, uh, Tsutomu Osugi and Tatsuhito. Katsuhito Senga, I think they're from Okinawa Pro Wrestling, maybe. Uh, Fuminori Abe, Chihiro Hashimoto, Miku Iwata, who are both from Sendai Girls. Uh, Hanako Nakamore from Pure J, Veni, uh, Super Delphin, Suri, Kaori Oniyame, uh, Ryo Mizunami, Miyuki Takase, and more names to be announced. More names to be announced. And um, usually these shows, you you have you you've watched all the memorial shows, Karen? I have watched all of them and I've covered the last two for post. So yeah. it is kind of, it is kind of unfortunately my my annual I hate saying memorial, but this is how I celebrate the life and legacy of Hana Kimura every year is that No, I, of course. I, 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 try, I try to pull up some matches that I knew of hers from stardom, but I I make it a point to carve out even take a day off and just make it a day about just watching the wrestling and watching them celebrate her life and legacy. And, you, and usually, it was a very short one. She was very loved by a lot of people. And usually, these shows, like I've seen, maybe the first one. Um, you know, like usually, most like these shows tend to be, you know, very much a celebration of her life and her yeah. love for for professional wrestling. And they and they put try to and the the participants try to put on like a, a very fun show for the people at Cork and Hall. So I, I think if if you're able to be able to 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 acquire this to stream this and to help. You know, Kimura raise money like she's still in a legal battle with with the people she feels are are you know are complicit or responsible for uh, Hana's unfortunate uh, you know uh, death. That uh, if you if you if you uh, you know want to support that, then please you know find out how you can order it. I'm sure we'll have it the information up on postwrestling.com. I'm sure once that information is available and they, they work out the details, you can find out what, what, uh, how you can help, how you can, you yeah. know, order it uh, at postwrestling.com. Just keep an eye on our, uh, the website. I'm sure either Andrew Thompson, Neil Flanagan, or, or my man, John Pollock's gonna, gonna have that information up there at some point before May 23rd. 
I mean, there's also a column that comes out every month that might, you know, include a little listen, some some details you know on it. Listen, <laughs> I'm I, sitting I, right here, man. Listen, listen, right here. listen. We we we're we're gonna get to the plugs at the end of the show, Karen. <laughs> we already plugged the T-shirt. You know what I'm saying? No, I apologize. That's an oversight on my part. I, 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 I am. Humbly. You know you. You know I am kidding. <laughs> I, I humbly uh, uh, apologize, and I, I, if I could fall on a sword, well, no, not don't. literally. No, I don't. Would. Please don't. I will fall on no, the metaphorical I, uh, sword. Of my, not, no, 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 just, no, no so, dying on hills, no falling on swords, no being carried home on shields. I like my friends very much alive and thriving. You know, I was going to use the metaphor of sword of Democles, but that has like absolutely no bearing on on the situation. So we'll I just. Don't know what the sword uh, of <laughs> Uh, I don't think it's in, it really won't do as much right now. Yeah. Anyways, uh, that's that's going to be happening, and uh, I, I mean, I, I already like so many. I I'm I, I'm excited to see what the, the people from Senja are going to do. One of my favorites, Fuminori, Fuminori Abe, is on this show. Uh, uh, sorry, doing great stuff since she's come back to Japan yeah. after leaving NXT. Uh, yeah, it's it, it should be a hell of a show. Um, let's, let's move on. Uh, we're going to, you, you, you made a note about a returning wrestling wrestler from injury. Who would that be? Karen, who are we going to uh, talk about? I, we're talking about Ms. Natsupoy, I believe. Is yes. that, that was the, that we're talking about. Or is, I have my stardom notes in the wrong place. That's lovely. Okay. So Natsupoy is slated to finally come back on the 9th of March. She's going to be in a tag match with Saori Ano, who's in Cosmic Angels together with. And then she, they'll be tagging against Chihiro Hashimoto and Suri, who is making her debut in Stardom. Uh, that's a hell of a that's a hell of a tag team, Suri and, and Chihiro Hashimoto, because they're they've been rivals for a long time. Yes, and I I remember watching Natsupoi's singles match against Chihiro Hashimoto a few months back, and it was really 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 good. So I'm very curious to see how their dynamic because they've been. Hashimoto and Suri have been trading wins and losses against each other. So it's one of those things like I'm very curious to see where where this match goes from here. Um, but yeah, Natsupoi has been out for quite some time. She she was one of the, the, the multiple injuries that kind of cropped up during the five star or just after it. Right. And, you know, while we're we're talking about Natsupoi, do you think that when Rossi Ogawa finally makes his you know his 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 announcement of like what he's going to be doing his new promotion mm -hmm. which is which is i think people are 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 pretty much the you know convinced that's that's the next move for him he's going to create his own new promotion to, to compete mm -hmm. with stardom um do you think natsupoi is someone that would go with rossi ogawa like she would she would leave stardom for <sighs> for this new promotion my gut tells me that natsupoi is because she's always been on the cusp of great things, she's 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 always been a a a champion. But she's the only, the only singles championship she's ever held is the high speed championship. So, and she's been in the Cinderella tournament. She's gotten far in it before. So, I'm thinking she may be one of the ones who stays. Right. Even though, like, if if say Especially Bushiro depending if, if they added time because she's been out on injury. I don't know if they. I don't know if they do what the WWE does where they tack on time for time lost due to injury. Right. So, well, I mean, I also think like she's kind of been, you know, she was injured because I, you know, I, you can argue because of the schedule that Bushiroad had, you mm -hmm. know, her on that she might be like, oh, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to have that to happen again. I don't want to be, if they don't make changes to the schedule or how they treat or how they book this company, maybe I don't want to stay here. Maybe I have more faith yeah. in the, the, you know, Nogawa. Who knows? Um, I I don't have any kind of sense either way where she would go, but I'll 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 take uh, you know I I'll, I'll I'll trust your learned opinion about Natsupoi that that she she's likely to stay. Well, but we'll see, right? If she were to leave and go freelance, she could do very well. I think I think she could do very very well. The the hard part about Natsupoi is that she also has like different projects within stardom like the um the tag team with tam when they have like the singles that, that have been released together like they have an album and stuff like that so it's it, it it all depends on how easy it would be to untangle herself from all the projects that she has with with the company that isn't just wrestling right and it's not to say like even if she stays for another year or so in stardom that she like when her contract is up in the year i i, I do think a lot of people 
um, if Ogawa's promotion when it, when it happens mm-hmm. is successful and they're, mm-hmm. and they're and, and they're like oh shit and like we'll see how this new management does with stardom from bushi road that people not this year but maybe next year be like oh man i i i might i'm gonna think about my options now well it's one of those things with right now you know the fiscal year is winding down you, you know there's the the rumors now you know that julia is is set to leave stardom we don't know where she's going just yet but because you know she, like I think Meltzer said it previously was that like she's planning on taking time off in March. So we don't know how long into March we will see Julia in stardom. But, you know, March 31st comes that's the end of the fiscal year. April 1st, that's their that's the first page for them for the new fiscal year. So that's when every like the new contracts should theoretically start. Yeah. So it's one of those things where. Say a month or two from April 1st, whatever Rossi has planned launches come the fall time like october november when the contract renewal time starts they have to start thinking about what they're going to if they're going to resign or if they're going to stay or they're going to leave there could be a shift in stardom but it also depends on how people that are staying behind are booked exactly when we'll we'll see like who does the initial initial exodus from stardom yeah. to join rossi ogawa um the front front runner is probably arguably the biggest star in the company um next to or on par with Maya Iwatani and that would be Julia she seems like she's very appreciative and loyal to Rossi Ogawa I I gotta imagine maybe even Mayu is pretty loyal <laughs> and appreciative to Rossi yeah. Ogawa as well um my, but my, uh, my gut tells me because Julia was vo- very vocal especially in the last six months with the problems that that they've had with Bushi Road in regards to like t- like either people getting injured or scheduling. There's like the whole s- scheduling snafu that re- re- uh, resulted in the previous president Harada like stepping down and then the new uh, president Okada stepping in. I could easily see because Julia seems like she has the mindset where she's thinking long term about things. She's not just thinking about her life and stardom and like living in the fishbowl um, because, you know, there is a whole great wide world out there. And what one of the things that I liked about her when in November of 2022, when I went to the show in Osaka, uh, it was there was the, the Moneyball ladder match. And one Julia's appeal to winning the lottery or that ladder match was that she wanted to establish like, like kind of like an office or like a, a way for women wrestlers when they finish their wrestling career to help them find jobs like she has she's thinking about her life just be not just within the ring but what she's what like long-term plans and that kind of mindset could easily be someone you could either build a build a new promotion with with a long-term plan for what's going to happen to the wrestlers after they don't want to wrestle anymore yeah other than just retiring or getting injured and having to retire and then they just fade into existence so I think that's the hard, the harder part for them is that it's not like even even in the dojo like a lot of the new like the new Japan dads are the ones that are doing a lot of the training in the dojo with the stardom talents. It's not it's not stardom talents necessarily training stardom talents all the time. Right. Which which is a kind of like different from what was happening before Bushi Road bought that, yeah. right? Correct. So we we'll see. But yeah. on, on the topic of stardom, still, let's let's talk about the the big tournament. It's one of their big annual events. The Cinderella tournament begins yep. March 9th and uh, will last about uh, eleven days, and it ends on March twentieth. And uh, you have not only do we have a list of the the uh, the participants, Karen. You you went out and you and you have the brackets for for this. <laughs> Literally, when you said that we we had to just, like push back our recording, I was like, quick, I'm gonna knock this out real quick. So. I'm going to go through the first round matchups yeah. um, and then who the winners of, of those respective d- matchups will go- meet in the second round because like there's like eight women who have a bye in the first round. Right. Yeah. And I'm going to go over notable omissions because you. I think a lot of people will be surprised that at the list of people that were left out of this year's tournament as opposed to previous years where they literally shoehorn every single body possible into the tournament. So on March Ninth is it's the opening day. First round, you're gonna have Hanan versus Hanako, and the winner of that will face Mirai. And Mirai is the 2022 and 2023. She's the defending Cinderella tournament champion. Uh, then you have Starlight Kid versus Yuzuki, and that winner will the next day will face Suzu Suzuki. 
Saki Kashima versus Saya Ida. That winner will face the high speed champion May Sara. Lady C versus Yuna Mizumori will face Ami Sore, who is currently an artist of stardom champion. Uh, Kurara Sayaka versus Natsuko Tora. That winner will face Azumi. So good luck to whoever be, whoever wins that one. It's probably going to be Natsuko. Uh, then Miyu Amasaki versus Rana Yagami. There's like so many new, new names that I'm not used to saying just yet. Uh, that person will face my Sakurai. Uh, Zena has come back from, I think she's from Australia. She's back in stardom again for her next tour. In, and she'll be facing a returning Momo Kogo, who was out for, also out for injury, but she's finally back. And the, that winner will face Waka Tsukiyama because Tsukiyama was previously a semifinalist. Um, and then Koguma versus Ruaka will face Hazuki on the 16th. So the first four matchups will be on the 10th. The last four will be on the 16th. Now, the notable admissions. There are three previous tournament winners who are not on this list. You've got Momo Watanabe from 2018, Julia, who was the 2020 champion, and but also the, the strong women's champion. We'll get to that in a second. And then Saya Kamitani, who won in 2021. And of course, my my Iwatani, I think, won the very, 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 very first one, like years ago. Um, but uh, Kamitani is also one of the, is half of the Goddesses of Storm champions. Now, current champions that aren't included in the tournament, which is weird because usually they are. So I think it's good that they're actually sitting it out because that means that we could set up the whatever pay-per-view happens after the Cinderella tournament where people can start challenging all of these other people. Um, Arena has a Future of Stardom championship defense on the 9th against a uh, Miran from uh, Women's Wrestling Diana. Uh, Shuri is sitting it out. Uh, she's never won the, the uh, Cinderella tournament, but she's a five-star tournament champion. And, and also she's the current Artist of Stardom champion with Ami and Murai, who are in the tournament, or not in the tournament. Yes, in the tournament. Saori Ano is the Wonder of Storm champion. She will have the tag match with Natsupoi on that day. Micah is the World of Storm champion. She's sitting out. Mayu Iwatani is the IWGP Women's Champion. She's sitting out. <laughs> and then people who are were uh, omitted, uh, Mina Shirakawa, which I was found very surprising, but she is slated for Windy City Riot. So it is possible that she could challenge the winner of Julia versus Stephanie Vacare, um, which is scheduled for the 10th. Uh, Tam Nakano, who is back. Natsupoi has her return match. Hina, uh, the twin of Arena, but she's also still in high school. So she probably has, like, even though most of the tournament is on the weekends, the finals are on a school day. So I don't think she wants to miss school. And uh, Tekla might still be out on medical. So that's those are that's everything that's going on right now. On the ninth, along with Natsupoi's uh, return match, there is a six women uh, New Japan Strong preview match with Julia Shuri and Konami tagging against Stephanie Vacare with Momo Watanabe and Fukigen Death. Uh, as I said before, Rina's defending her future Stardom Championship, and then all eight women who have buys in the first round are having an eight way battle. And then on the tenth, Julia will meet Stephanie Vacare, who won at. Uh, Battle in the Valley became the number one contender. So, predictions on the winners and what their wish will be. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, my based, my. Oh, based go ahead. On, no, based on who's in the pool, who would you who 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 are you leaning towards? Um, I'm going to go with Hazuki because I think she really needs to be pushed to the forefront. Um, yes, she is such. Um, you know, just such, she's a nat, you know, she's a natural stardom talent. You know, she she came through their dojo system. She mm -hmm. left. She she's got a great story. She she's comes back. She's she's primarily been in the tag division with Koguma, um, yes. with some flourishes in the singles division. But I think if she wins the Cinderella tournament, then it's it's a it's a nice feather in the cap, and she then gets her wish along with. Mm -hmm. The, the 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 dress that that the winners get mm -hmm. they don't get a glass slipper though i don't i don't i don't they understand. get a glass slipper trophy yeah but they should actually get real glass slippers too you know how uncomfortable high heels are let alone ones that are like either like that are like pseudo like plastic -y glass no that's how people get hurt man yeah. fair enough <laughs> fair enough uh but i would imagine that she would uh she she'll challenge for either the the white belt or 
the red belt. I don't know if it's if it's her time to to be the red belt champion. I think there's like other storylines going on there, but I think her and Sariano can can have a great match for the white belt. And I can see like you know what Hazuki with that white belt would have a great run. Um, yeah. It would really propel her to the top of the, the roster, to the top of the card. So I, I, I really think it's her time to get get the push. So I'm going to go with Hazuki. Option A was Hazuki for me. But for your consideration, Azumi. I, I feel like Azumi is long overdue for a singles push. Uh, that like she she you know she ha- was in the high speed division for a very long time she's held like she's won other tournaments she's done very well against a lot of other people but I feel like she's been with the company long enough because she started when she was like 11 <laughs> 10 or 11 like, when she was in middle school <laughs> I think she could not only win the tournament but also become the next world of stardom champ or wonder of stardom champion i actually have hazuki earmarked for the five star grand prix winner okay fair enough because I, I i feel like hazuki could bypass the what like she could be one of the ones that could actually bypass or if she were to have a single title it would be, she could go the new japan strong route and then go towards the world of stardom championship if that makes sense I don't, I don't feel like she, I don't necessarily feel like Haz, Hazuki's been around long enough that I don't think she necessarily needs it. But again, we haven't seen her have a singles run in a very, very, very long time. So I, I, again, either would be fine for me. I mean, it, with, you know, you mentioned uh, Azumi, then you also have to talk about Starlight Kid because, you know, they're yeah, generation just mates. A, she just had a, she just had a challenge against um, Sauriano for the championship. So in in my dream booking at at Grand Queendom at the end of the year, it's Azumi versus Starlight Kid for the white belt. For the white belt. So I I I'm gonna go with like I need to get there. (laughs) A to your your you know choice A for both of us would be Azuki. Your choice B is for your consideration is Azumi. I'll say mine would be Starlight Kid and like me. I don't know. Like there's so many belts there. Maybe not for the you know the white belt, but she could always. You know, if she won, she could always just say, I, well, this is my second chance. And this could be the time that she actually wins the belt. The, the previous title match was to to soften up Sariano yeah. to, for, for her to get the, the belt this time. We'll yeah. see. But what we're both saying our, our number one choice to win is Hobbsky. And I think pretty much for the same reasons that it's it's time for her to get shined. But yeah, maybe if it's not the Cinderella, maybe Hobbsky's time will be the five-star Grand Prix later in the year. Any other notes from you uh windy city riot that is happening in april 12th in chicago mina shirakawa and azumi have both been announced for the show this will be shirakawa's second new japan strong show the last one she was on was rumble in rumble on 44th street back in october of 2022 uh this will be azumi's first new japan strong branded show the last time she was on a show in the united states was uh the first stardom uh, in the USA the in 2019. Um, and then, of course, CMLL Stephanie Vaquer is announced. So I am curious to see how her match with Julia goes in a couple of weeks. And then, yeah, she and Julia are meeting at Korak going on the 10th. And, uh, yeah, that's all I have right now. I don't, I don't want to lean into the rumor mill that's going on right now with who may or may not be training in Japan, as it were. But... We'll see. We'll see so, if, uh, if 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 she strolls about and shows up. I just want to mention one thing that I I will be in Philadelphia sharing uh, you know WrestleMania weekend and I do have tickets for the Stardom show. Wait, what you know what's what, the you, data? You, you, you know what you need for the Stardom show? You need one of these. <laughs> I might have my my t shirt by then, uh, um, but. You know what's the date on that? That's like April. That is April fourth. It is a April Thursday. 4th. So as you said, Karen, like all like end of the fiscal year is is the end of March. Correct. That, uh, but this is like a big show for them. So even if Rossi Ogawa on April first says this is my new promotion and this is join who's joining it, I I personally do not think he's going to say to 
any of them like you can't work in the United States because I think it's something that they a lot of them want to do if they're able to yeah to be on the show they're gonna be at the former ECW arena it I don't think that necessarily has any meaning for them it has some meaning for me because I want to get it off my bucket list but I it's a fun little venue um there's also a lot of good food nearby uh but you know what I mean I think they would want to do that show at the very least I'm not too worried about like it's just gonna be Tanahashi dressed like you know Dressed it dressed dressed in wet in drag or something like that, you know. And just my Iwatani and like five rookies. That's all that's left. Yeah, it's no. just my my and, and, because and she they... has the she has the movie. That's what. No, um, I think if start if there are talents that are leaving, I'm hoping that Stardom has worked out something with them that if they want to work that show and get that experience, I think that would be what's most beneficial because that's what a lot of fans when the show was announced were expecting. Yeah. Um, I can. I'm fairly certain, given what's going on with Julia, that she's pro- she's probably not going to be on that show. But if anyone who is working with Rossi Ogawa in the future is smart, consider whatever you do that the the talent that joins you get them international work visas, let them go places, let them go to the UK, let them go to Australia, let them come here to the states or up to Canada, let them expand their horizons because it'll only make them be- one better wrestlers but also it'll draw international talent to your promotion also let them and have a philly cheesesteak sandwich and go to goddamn mm-hmm. fucking waffle house like me <laughs> yes for the <laughs> philly cheesesteak question mark on the waffle house listen it, members it, of it, it, <laughs> roster if you if you are listening to this and you want to hang out and have a good conversation with 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 two North American fans, you know, at, at a Waffle House. My DMs are open. It'll be me and Rich Fan hanging out with like a Zoomy and fucking fuck, you better, uh, and fucking house of kids. You better call me. And, <laughs> and, and, and Shuri, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a picture with Shuri at Waffle House and send it to to fucking Tom Waller. He's gonna be guy. Like, God damn it! I should have been part of that. But anyways, let's um, move on, Karen. Let's yes. let's move on to Russell Universe. Um, and uh, you know they just announced that they're they're gonna raise their price to uh, one thousand two hundred ninety eight yen. Which what what is that in in American dollars? That's like what seven bucks. It's yeah, it's just like maybe eight dollars and change. What a bargain! But with that price increase in Japan, they have added promotions. They have added, uh, well, not really added, but Gombre Pro has left the cyber fight kind of umbrella, but they'll still be on Russell Universe. That's awesome. That's really smart. Oh, I just, I just saw the other names. And then joining them will be, uh, you know, Michinoku Pro. Yeah. Uh, real zero one versus fake zero one. I I don't know. Is there a faux zero one? <laughs> well, there's the one Steve Carino used to run in the United States, which oh, I, okay. I never really considered to be real zero one. If he's listening to this, he's probably like, oh, uh, whatever. Oh, that, you know. that, that's that's the W H Park annotated version. That's not the actual name of the promotion, right? It's not real zero one. That that's your version of it in the notes. No, it's, it says in fucking <laughs> on, on on in fucking they call it real zero one and okay. and like I'm like what the. F- Versus what? It was like it used to be zero one max and fucking pro wrestling zero one and and zero one. I got. Let me, I don't know if you know the history of zero one, Karen. Like I, how don't, it, how, I can't say that it, I do. It is one of the most the weirdest promotion creations. I'll just give you a little brief synopsis here. So basically, in, in the in the late nineties, Shinya Hashimoto, who is one of the three musketeers of New Japan Pro Wrestling, he. He decided, well, we're going to do, we're going to try to create the UWFI New Japan feud again. I'm going to create my own splinter promotion and then take some people from New Japan, including Shinjiro Otani, Tatsuhiro Takaiwa, and, and some uh, other people. Okay. And we're going to form our, this, and then we're going to do an invasion angle and we're going to try to draw money because at the same time, he's like in this big, like weird pseudo shoot feud with, uh, um, what's his fucking name? Naoya Ogawa who like shot on him and embarrassed him. And then it's like, and then Inoki's involved. So there, it's all fucked up on that end. Anyways, it turned out to be a real promotion and everyone actually, actually all left. And for, and, and zero one has always had, had, be, had become somehow became an idea to be a fake, you know, promotion to a, 
to do an invasion angle to become actually a real promotion. And Shinya Hashimoto was like, hey, I'm the boss. I run this company now and I'm, I don't want to work for New Japan anymore. You know, it's, right. it's really interesting. But most importantly of the name of the promotions announced is, is um, Karen, especially for you and you and I. Yes, is, let's is, go. Is Sendai Girls will now be available on Russell Universe. So Ooh. major shows from uh, Senjo uh, will be now available if you have a Russell Universe Hell subscription, yeah. which I do. Uh, thanks I do to too. a friend. I, I not not Karen, I actually have a separate friend Same. that that, um, <laughs> uh, that I share logins with. Benefactor. <laughs> and I'm not going to say that person's name because I don't want Russell Universe people like I'm going to find this fucking person and cancel their subscription, but. That to me is the most exciting thing is I I want to try to follow Sendai Girls because I think it's probably the best indie in, in Japan. Not indie Joshi. I'm just best indie yes. in Japan. Right. That's not yeah. one of what you would call one of the majors. They they're yeah. they're they're they are still a small promotion running basically in, in the Sendai region. Yep. Uh, hence in their northern, name. North, northern Japan. In northern Japan. The rice fields. And and yeah, and like, but fuck, they have such an they have such they, they're top three wrestlers, not counting, you know, um, their founder. You know, we have Miki oh, Iwata, yeah, Chihiro, Chihiro Ashimoto, and Dash Chizako are, yep. and they have a crop of up and coming wrestlers that you know, they like, do. you know, like I, I would love Sendai Girls to be like on a par with like, say, where New Japan is stardom is New Japan. Okay, then underneath that, is, you know, Sendai Girls could become like. Pro Wrestling Noah or 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 yes. Dragon Gate, you know what I mean? Like that level for 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 Sen for for Senjo to to then be able to run other parts of Japan, but make Sendai and draw people to the Sendai region where they I I think they have pretty good curry over there. I don't know. I think that's my understanding. God, oh yeah, I, I had some I, curry I, on the other day. I try not to look at like local food, like food places when I can't travel. So I'm just like, Oh my gosh, all their food sounds so good. And it's yeah. Especially cause they're in, they're in a uh, agricultural area and they're very no well known for their rice where they're at. So I'm just like, Oh, I just want a really good bowl of rice. Right. Now. <laughs> yes. I, I, I shout out to my good friend, Joey Bay. I, I had, I had dinner with him the other night. He's, he's here in Toronto for a business trip. We went to a place called Maji curry, which, does uh, Japanese style curry, not not uh, not not Indian style curry, but Japanese style curry, which is different. And uh, I will say, Karen is very authentic tasting this, this this Japanese curry, and and we also got a a, bowl, a a plate of karage fried chicken, and again, very authentic tasting. And uh, you know, if you come to Toronto, Karen, you can enjoy the 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 wonderful delicacies of of Canadian uh, version of Japanese curry that is authentic in in my humble opinion i really need to get back up to toronto i haven't been there since like 2018 or 17 or something like that so yeah i really want to go back up there well you listen if you come up here i think we can arrange a a get together in either john pollock's backyard or waiting's backyard <laughs> as long as the bosses are okay with us taking over their backyard for a little bit <laughs> they uh, they like oh way is always saying uh, I need to, uh, yeah, I need to get more use out of this deck, you know, WH. You know? <laughs> so, anyways, let's move on. Uh, you know, Karen, last time we talked, we uh, we talked about uh, All Japan Pro Wrestling's Triple Crown Champion, Katsuhiko Nakajima. And how, sure how kind of, we talked about how he's doing this new character kind of based on Antonio Inoki. Uh-huh, uh, sure did. And, uh, well... He just as a quick note, though, he did retain his triple crown in a, in a defense against uh giant, giant twin Jun Saito, filling in for his his injured brother Ray Saito because uh his brother uh hurt his arm, but uh Jun did was not able to lift the triple crown from Nakajima. But someone who who did lift something from Nakajima was the uh the family of uh. The uh, the late Antonio Inoki uh, and the kind of the, the company representing that 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 brand the yeah. the IGF which used to stand for Inoki Genome Federation and now it stands for Inoki Genki Factory which which is a kind of it's a cute little title because if you know yeah. it, if you speak Japanese you'll know that Genki means like 
you know, cheerful, energetic. Genki desu ka? Hi. Genki desu ka? Genki desu, which means basically, are are you, are you doing well? Are you, are you feeling energetic? I'm great. I'm great. Yeah. Fuck yeah. I'm great. I'm fine. Thank you. And you? Exactly. So (laughs) uh, that, that is from Inoki Genome Federation to the Inoki Genki Factory, which I, I think is just trying to sell his brand do you, do you know like in in, in like so uh, several years ago karen like n- there's a point where Togi Inoki did not own his own likeness <laughs> think about wow. this the most famous pro wrestler in the history of japan, of japan he didn't have did not, ownership of his own eyes wow. no because i and, and the reason i know this because i was in japan at the time when when they were going to announce a new pachinko machine bearing his likeness and he was going to see none of the money because he did not own his likeness. <laughs> no. <laughs> Something like that. Wow. Something like that. That's uh, I and I just thought that's that's so Antonio Inoki if you know all about his scandals and mismanagement and how he, you know, allegedly embezzled money from from New Japan for wrestling and that's why he wasn't involved with them for such a long time. But anyways, I'm 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 uh, getting ahead of myself, or I'm <laughs> diverting myself from the main point. Anyways, Katsuhiko Nakajima, uh, who will be challenging, who will be facing for the Triple Crown, uh, the blue chip prospect, someone I think you would be very interested in, Karen. Like I don't know if you've watched any Yuma Anzai, have you? I've no. He's I've a Karen Pearson name. wrestler. He's a Karen <laughs> Pearson wrestler. Is that a phrase? That is that a category now? Yes, or, or or ones that are just like this would appeal. This is in Karen's wheelhouse. Wrestlers that appeal to Karen: Tanahashi, Go Shiozaki. Well, you Yuma can throw Anzai. in Yuma Yuma Ansai <laughs> in that thing. In that, like, I listen. I'm saying rising Hayato in your wheelhouse. All right, uh, young. Uh, uh, you know, I see the one that, with with guy liner that kind of looks like Yo yes. and Show during the Rapongi 3K days. Yes. Okay. Right. <laughs> That's fair. Right, fair, like you, you listen. Let fair me tell play. you something about Karen Peterson, everyone. <laughs> all right, she has a sense to never have gotten into the fucking Rattels, okay, and fucking pro wrestling Noah. I but, did not, to my uh, credit, I did not. Wrestling Hayato, <laughs> Yuma Anzai, young, uh, uh, what's his f- f- fucking Yuma Ao- Aoyagi's brother, Atsuki, yeah, Atsuki, Atsuki Aoyagi. Aoyagi. That, that, these are Karen Peterson wrestlers, about, I feel. What was it? Takuya Nomura was another one that you recommended. Takuya Nomura. He's such a <laughs> cherub face, little cute boy who likes to kick people. Yes. Kiyomi Kaito. I know. I, yeah, yeah. Ke- Takuya Keno, Nomura is a Karen Peterson wrestler. You watch, listen, you fucking watch a Takuya Nomura. Listen, you can watch Big Japan Wrestling for him, and he doesn't do any of the deathmatch stuff. He just okay, does the good. strong stuff. Okay. You don't have to worry about that shit. Let me tell you something. Joey Bay is listening to this. He's going to fucking tweet you and say yes he'll send you a lot of pictures of takuya nomura you know <laughs> i had my picture taken with him <laughs> fuminori <laughs> Abe, at a fucking big japan show at fucking Yo- in yokohama and we weren't allowed to take these pictures but like we i bought two of their t-shirts one for me one for joey and then you know who came along and said fuck that i'll take the picture i don't give a shit if the boss sees it hideki suzuki Hideki oh. Suzuki took our pictures. It was fucking awesome. Such a nice guy. He's, he's very much a nice guy. He's a very nice guy. I like Hideki Suzuki. Speaking of which, him and Suwama just won the All Japan World Tag Team Champions. From, oh, congratulations, uh, which, guys. Which, which, which were vacated by the Saito brothers because Rei Saito oh, was injured. They beat, they, they beat Kento Miyahara and uh, Yuma Aoyagi in a, in a decision match to fill the vacant title. So, hey, listen, my good friend Hideki Suzuki and my my other good friend uh, Suwama hanging out. <laughs> Close with, personal you know, friend Suwama. <laughs> my, who used to team with my other per- good personal friend Good close personal friend Shuji Shikawa, who's unfortunately no longer with the company. But, anyways, Nakajima, I, I, you know what? I, shout out to the Eastern Lariat for for translating this this fucking letter yeah. that that they sent that the Inoki Geki Factory wow. sent to All Japan for Wrestling and to Kazuki Nakajima. Um, anyways, the, the letter states that if uh, quote such performances, meaning Nakajima coming out to the, Inoki's music. He's saying he's the you know the the practitioner of Tokan style, uh, which means strong style basically. 
uh, if such performances are repeated in the future, IGF will seek an injunction and compensation for damages as a violation of trademark rights and the unfair competition prevention law um and Ooh. continues uh assist inc owns the phrase one two three da which is the signature catchphrase of antonio noki yep. and and the word token are synonymous with the late antonio noki uh, uh igf is entrusted with the management of the trademark design and portrait rights and then uh wow you know, the, the the eastern Laird twitter account also may you know translate key bullet points of the letter from from igf to all japan and to nakajima there wasn't any contact between ajpw igf yeah. or the inoki family igf slash inoki family are quote puzzled about ajpw's trademark inquiry for tokan style so they want to they wanted to trademark this phrase tokan style you know, which, you know, IGF says they have a claim to. Yeah. Uh, they will continue to take, quote, appropriate measures to deal with any trademark infringement. But my favorite part is where they, where they, where, where the Eastern Larry had translated the, the last part of this letter. Uh, quote, as you know, the founder of All Japan Pro Wrestling is Giant Baba, who, along with Inoki, created the golden age of pro wrestling. We wonder how Baba is looking at this situation from heaven. Spicy. <laughs> o- only in wow. Japan, folks, where you're going to say the Woo! ghost of your founder is probably not happy with you infringing our fucking trademark. I love yeah. it. So, you know, so Nakajima now is wearing a terry cloth bathrobe. Uh, yep. He has yeah. the Tokan style shit like uh, crossed out, like an X's, I think. And and he, he, he looks wow. like... He 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 looks like he's he's like you know like auditioning for a part in Weekend at Bernie's Four or something like that oh. you know like it's 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 kind of sad you know like like the way he he he's portrayed coming to the ring now, yeah. but hopefully he just like drops it and just goes back to being Katsuhiko Nakajima. That's that's yeah. all I want for the young man. I I thought that his choice to to pursue that character after like getting into new all into all Japan, I was like. Why you were you were fine the way you were? Why this? So so part of me wonders if it was his decision to do this, or if it was all Japan being like, "Hey, let's try this out for you." It's weird because there is talk that um, the the former son-in-law of an Antonio Noki, Simon Noki, yeah. who is the son-in-law, he's not blood related to no to Noki, but because he's like, "Oh, I'm he's my father-in-law. I'm just gonna professionally adopt." His, his my wife's family name to to be my i don't know if it's his legal real name i, I yeah. think it's, it's a professional name that he uses right yeah but he Same is name. he's he's you know a consultant to nakajima apparently allegedly well then um, he's consultant so, uh might want to get a refund on that because well yeah, I, at the same time also up. i do not think he's affiliated legally with the Inoki family anymore from my understanding from what i was able to 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 gleam on uh, in Ooh. articles how accurate that is i'm not sure i'm just let me point yeah. let me say that right away um but yeah so i it's a little embarrassing for nakajima to be coming out to this character and then being told like actually you're not allowed to use this character and then him basically implying and just like kind of you know making himself look bad with like kind of like the changes he adjusts and adjustments he's yeah. had to make to his entrance gear but enough of that let's let's move on karen let's talk about new japan for wrestling you and bruce lord the the uh the bombastic bruce lord maybe we're gonna get that a t-shirt hmm? <laughs> bruce how, how Christopher, you like if you're listening that's right dicky bombastic bruce try to try to think of something up for our good friend the big man bruce lord uh and, you and him, whiskey, you and he whiskey, have- whiskey and ice cream are a real thing man we, we try you, our best with the New Japan. You, you and Bruce have reviewed several big New Japan shows, including the the New Beginning, two nights of that. And yep. and, and from that, I watched some of the, the matches on there. And, I, I, you know, Karen, my, you know, like, if you want the full review of these shows, go listen to Karen and Bruce's review, uh, reviews over at the Post Wrestling Cafe on, on the yep. Patreon. Um, but my, my, general thoughts are i i came away very perplexed about the booking 
Yeah. So um, these so seems to we. be <laughs> this seems to be this kind of musical chairs with you know two titles in particular. One is the TV title that went from Hiroshi Tanahashi, who beat you know inaugural champ and the guy who put the title on the map, Zack Saber Jr. To yeah. then losing it to uh, Matt Riddle, uh, mm-hmm. who came in, you know, as an ex WWE guy uh, to some controversy, mm-hmm. and okay, I I don't I don't know why because I here's my thing I don't think Matt Riddle's long for New Japan I I don't I think he's just biding his time until he can get a, a contract with AEW or make a return to the WB I don't think the latter is going to happen but the the former might. Yeah. You know, um, or, you know, I, but I, I don't think New Japan is like where his final destination is in his mind for his career aspirations. And mm-hmm. then from there, we then moved on to uh, Nick Nemeth, the former, uh, you know, uh, Dolph Ziggler winning the, 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 you know, the newly minted global heavyweight title, which, you know, was put on David Finley over Osprey and, uh, John Moxley. Uh, John Moxley. Okay. And then I thought when he won that belt, I thought Finley, okay, they're, they're, they're going to go all the way with Finley. No, his first, his V1, he loses to a fucking X WB guy who, again, I do not think is, is sticking around long-term in this company. And is, I don't think, I don't know how many people he is or isn't going to put over. And I'm just like, why? And then finally, in relation to this musical chairs thing, the former television champion Tanahashi is now put into the global heavyweight title uh, scene. And for yep. some reason is now the number one contender, even though he just lost the fucking title to fucking yep. Matt Riddle. Correct. This makes no sense to me. That is also correct. Also it, what it does show to me is how new Japan management and booking have no fucking clue on how to replace because it's Okada and had my guess is Okada gave them more than enough notice for them to kind of formulate who we're going to push. You know, who we're going to push the guy who's fucking injured. Who's like the only star outside of Naito that we actually fucking have, you know, because you know, he's gone. Okada's gone. You know, fucking left Nakamura left, right. You know, this is leaving fucking Osprey left. So they have no idea. Let's let you know. Let's move into our second big. Instead of like just trying to push the guy that they wanted to fucking push, they put on an XWB guy who's not sticking around, who's now going to be challenged by Tanahashi. That's who I'm talking about. Who's in? Who's like? I'm sorry. I love Tanahashi, and I always will. But he's his time is done. He's not yeah. the guy you put the rocket on. I'm sorry. No. You know who? Y- Yoda Suji. Yes, he's right there. He's right there. He's Jeff right Cobb, there. yes, he's right there. He's right there. You know what I mean? Great Why? O'Con, right there. Great O'Con, right there. David what? Finley was doing fine, and he was right there. I thought he was the project. <laughs> he's not the project because, at the end of the day, these comp like New Japan can say we're the number two company in the world. Well, they're not. They're three now in the world after AW. Okay, yeah. but. Uh, you know, they can say all this one. We want to be a global leader. We want to, you know, we want to stand on their marks. Their marks are people who work for fucking WWE, even the fucking mid carters. And that's what Dolph Ziggler was. He was a fucking mid carter. Fucking Matt Riddle is a fucking mid carter. And you put two titles that were established, that were one you're trying to establish on a, on a younger guy that you hope is going to stick around. If I'm David Finley, I'm like, yeah, I I don't know if I'm sticking around. They're gonna just put me over for this guy who's who's got like what another five seven years left in his career, and I got like twenty more in my tank. To and then and then and then a guy who you know like you know he left under really you know embarrassing circumstances from the WB, you know, mm-hmm. and like and and, and I I don't think the recent interview he just did with Errol Hawani did him any favors, mm-hmm. uh, and and so yeah, I'm like. For, for for what for like do you think these people are are going to make a difference in your business globally they're not they're not going to make any fucking difference in your business like in japan or in the united states because no one gives a shit to pay an extra 40 fucking dollars to buy a ticket to see matt riddle or fucking nick nemeth okay 
that's just my opinion. That's me on my soapbox here. I don't understand why you don't you fucking push Shota Umino, fucking <coughs> Yoda Suji, Yuya Uemura, who just lost his hair, sadly. But I think it's probably a good move for him to not have that much hair anymore. That's my opinion, Karen. But it was such and good hair, though. It was you, really, you, you, he had really good hair, man. Yeah, but Yoda Suji looks better with longer hair. Yes, okay? that, that, so that, does, that, was the, that was the consensus that Bruce and I came up with is that if one of them had to lose it, it Yuya could lose, stand to lose the hair. Suji, we're not so sure. <laughs> and and his brother on Monarch Legacy of Monsters as the bar as a bartender of a secret bar in Tokyo. We but anyways, and Shota Suji in this house. But, but yeah, that's, that's my point, right? It's it's because you know we we were wondering what New Japan would be, what I what direction they would go in to figure out who they are without Okada. And they've had opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. When that interview with Sports Illustrated came out back in November that was suggesting that Okada might leave, that was the time they needed to start thinking about finally pulling the trigger on all these people. When they did it with Finley, I was like, finally. Finley has been there long enough, and he has worked hard enough to, for people to keep coming in and pushing him down further and further down the card. He should not have lost. I mean... If I had to pick one of the two of those matches to lose, I would have rather Evil lose the belt to Umino. That was the move. Not putting the belt on Matt Riddle, not making not putting the belt on Nick Nemeth. If I had to pick between Nick Nemeth and Matt Riddle, fine, put the belt on Nick. But then what are you doing with David Finley? Is David Finley going to win the New Japan Cup? If he doesn't win the New Japan Cup and challenge Naito, what are we doing? Because you just set you just unraveled everything you did with the last six months. Since he became the leader of the Bullet Club, he has to. If he, if he's okay, he's in the New Japan Cup. Then, yeah, he should win it. He should run the board. He should yes. beat everyone that he's put in his bracket. And right. then, he, and then, if he challenges Naito, guess what? He should fucking beat Naito for that's that. That's what I'm saying. But that's what needs to happen. If 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 him losing this new belt that they made this whole big deal about, if it is to mean anything, they need to do something very big with David Finley. And by that same token, like with David Finley, if you put the belt on him and make him a strong champion, okay, yes. then this is how you build up Shota. This is how you build up Suji, Yuya. And you know what? Fuck it. Just fucking get Narendri out of this house of torture bullshit and make him and a fucking Andrew. wrestler again. Yeah, get them both out. Also, I want to make this point. Like Adam Summers of the Big Audio Nightmare over at the Wrestling Observer, he was on Twitter and he he made like he's he made a great point, and I want to reiterate that that, that Adam made the point of comparing current New Japan Pro Wrestling to 2000s Pro Wrestling Noah, where they refused to see the two stars that were in front of them because they were juniors, but they were the most popular wrestlers, and the fans would have gotten used to it. And they eventually made them heavyweights, and that's now Mishimara Fuji and Kenta. They had these two guys, along with Morishima, to be the guys who should have replaced Kenta Kobashi, Mitsuhara Masawa, and Akira Tawe, and even Jun Nakayama, along with Go Shiozaki, who was in the company at the same time. Okay, but they refused to, like, they put the belt on Marafuji, they took it off of him, his V1 bullshit and i was watching that in real life in real time and i was just like this bullshit they should have just kept stuck with marafuji but you know there's a lot of reasons for economic reasons why you know they they didn't but this is to me similar in the sense that now we're going to talk about two guys who should be heavyweights now and and that's desperado and yes. that's Haruma takahashi these guys yes. should be moved up and some Absolutely. people have gone on gone on gone on saying gone on twitter and, and social media karen they say well they don't want to be heavyweights and i say to that fuck them i if i'm if i'm management if i'm thinking these two guys are fucked they're so popular they're veterans they can easily be they're they're big enough they don't really have to make any kind of size adjustment put on extra weight really to be heavyweights i don't care if desperado says to me i don't want to be heavyweight i want to stay junior no i don't care we're going to push you as a heavyweight and you're going to fucking like it. I say the same thing to Hiromu Takahashi. No, I don't. I, I like to be junior for the rest of my career. No, fuck you. You're going to be a heavyweight. I don't care what they want. If I, I think would... it's a better, better business move, yeah. fucking make them heavyweights and, and push them. I guarantee you, once the money starts rolling in, they're like, fuck, the, the grass is really greener on the fucking heavyweight side. They're going to be perfectly fine being fucking heavyweights. Like literally, 
you could make I if they don't want to go full heavyweight, put them in the never division. Let them fight over that belt. Let it be somebody else besides evil who doesn't like I I am so incensed right now about what they are doing because if the longer that Hiromu and Desperado stay in the junior division, I know they 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 are great junior heavyweights. They have great matches. They are your your safe pick, your Naito and Okada. Whenever you need them to do something, they will come in, they will come through, they will do whatever they have to. However, you have not built up anybody else in the junior division. <laughs> no, you've taken the, away from the junior division with you, you, with Rapongi 3K. I, well, you 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 we, yeah, there's 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 what they've done to show. The uh, Watto is the defending best of super juniors champion, and he just had knee surgery. Robbie Eagles is stuck in Australia, they're not bringing him over, and I don't know why. TJP might be going heavyweight all of a sudden, we don't know what's going on with that. Um, Uemura and Ren Narita came back from excursion and are both heavyweights now. Like, what are you doing to your junior division? Like, Ishimori doesn't need a 15th reign with the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. I love Ishimori. I know he's a t- he, he, he is a on the, the shorter side. He's a small king. We love a small king. But some of these guys need to do something different. I, I need them to, if they're, like, when Hiromu was in the New Japan Cup that during the pandemic, he got all the way to Okada, and people were thinking he was going to win it. Why, why is it so far out of the realm of possibility for him or Desperado to be heavyweights. That's what I don't understand. It's not. They are so, be- they are so wildly popular and so beloved that people won't care. No, no one cares. It's wrestling. No one fucking cares. Okay? No one cares. They're big enough in terms of like f- just physicality. They're big enough. Also, their charisma in- eclipses so, charisma. so many eclipses so many other people in the heavyweight division that I, yep. you know, you listen, evil is a lost fucking cause. I know. And he has been for I a know. long fucking I know. time. He's there to be f- a, a fucking placeholder. He's there for fucking comedy and to get cheap heat. And it, and by the way, it doesn't fucking work because no one fucking likes it. Okay. Yeah. It's all go away heat. You can't convince me otherwise. And then you got these two guys who the fucking fans love. They want to see them go to a higher level. I'm sorry. Like I, I traditionally have, I love new Japan juniors have, for a long time. I placed them above the heavyweights for a long time because it yeah. had Liger, Otani Kanemoto and yeah. uh, you know Eddie was as black tiger. Okay. But like, even I know, like that's not where people should stay. They should Correct. become heavyweights. And if yeah. you want your favorites juniors to become like legit massive mega superstars. They are superstars in the junior division, but to become like Okada level and Naito level, Tanahashi they got, they level, gotta, you, they have to move you up. You gotta go up. You gotta go up. And you you should want that for these guys. I want everyone don't, to succeed. Don't give me this, oh, but they're they don't want to move. Fuck that. I I don't care. I as a fan want them to move up. Yeah. I don't care about their happiness. I want to yeah. see them fucking fight, have good fucking matches and try to elevate the business of this company that I want to start liking again. Yeah. You know, the, the, the junior division, as much as I love them in it, it will not thrive so long as they are still in it. You're you, no. I, I want Doki to invest the super juniors. I want, I want show someone to knock some sense into show and make him show Tanaka. I want Yo to get his shit together. I the, like the, they have, as long as they rely on Desperado and Hiroma at this point, they're nothing but a crutch to the division because the it's, division will never thrive yeah. or grow or do anything more as long as they are always leaning on those two guys to be the ones that to give it legitimacy. Yeah. And anyways, mo- we'll move on from there, but that that's just oh. how like, let's Sorry. just fucking, <laughs> let's stop putting, making band-aids with fucking X fucking WWE guys, X fucking, TNA X fucking AW people coming in as like your your band aids. That's exactly what they are. No, you need the, to get the fucking cure, and that's the young lions that you have. That's people who need to be elevated to from bottom of the bottom of the card to the mid card, mid card to upper mid card to the main event. Okay, that's how fucking wrestling works, and it doesn't work when you when you say we're gonna delay the push we have for these guys for some fucking for some fucking band-aids from some fucking placeholders which is what these two are and the other thing is that you wonder why people leave 
if you keep constantly like you you make you make a whole big deal about these homegrown talents and how they're the future of the company and they're the future of the company but every opportunity you get you yank out the carpet out from underneath them and then you bring somebody else that jumps the queue entirely because you want a you know a quick showcase you can't sit there after the eighth time eighth time it happens and wonder why people keep leaving it's it's oh. not the talent's fault anymore you are failing them you're setting them up for failure before you know karen like you know a japanese wrestler gets some success in the united states it's like no i'm gonna go back to japan because i that's where i want to make my name it's where i'll be i'll be pushed higher well guess what thanks to you know asuka thanks to io shirai aka io sky thanks to shinsuke nakamura people in japan wrestlers in japan they're not thinking shit Maybe New Japan's going to be my destination. Maybe New Japan, All Japan, Wrestling Noah, Dragon Gate, Stardom, whatever, is my journey to America, to yep. AEW, it to becomes a, a chapter the WWE. In your journey. It isn't your final right? destination. And that's and they also just have to look look at the aforementioned people. Takeshita in in AEW. Do you know, like it's Why like, is he not champion yet? Why? Why? Well, I mean, that's just Tony, right? That's just Tony not being oh. a very good booker. Yeah, I said it. Anyways, let, let, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And Kishi Muto made this comment. He's like, yeah, I can see like New Japan is a fucking like stepping stone for 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 the top people in Japanese wrestling to go yeah. like Okada to go to the WWE or AW. Like Nakamura, like he's just looking. I think he's basically using Asuka and and Shinsuke Nakamura as his best examples of that yeah. theory. Yeah. That yeah, like the trend is now towards like people in Europe and now Japan and even in and Mexico to like shit. Fuck, I want to work in the WWE because that's where you're gonna make the most money potentially anywhere yeah. else. That even like AW, but you know, like it depends. Like you, you have to, you know, you have to make your name in Japan as as a top main event draw there. But then, like, guess who's gonna come knocking the W? And the days of them like well, it's the language barrier. They don't. They American wrestling is beyond that now. Like you, you can still there get are resources matters. available. There are resources available. Nakamura. <laughs> didn't need a fucking translator he his english not that great and okada's english way better than nakamura's okay yeah and 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 still asuka is is like she doesn't have to speak great english it's all charisma and like if you have the physical charisma it will get you through by the way did you see this video on her her kind of channel tv channel on youtube I, where she I visited this where she visited this wrestling bar in nagoya and the own and the and the uh, mama there yeah. so, so the, the mama yeah, the mama is a massive fan and has been a massive fan. Like, like the uh, pro wrestling bar diva is actually on my list because I think it's in Nagoya. It's not in the Tokyo area. So no, it's in Nagoya. Yeah, she she stopped on her way from Osaka going to Tokyo or the opposite direction, but she stopped explicitly to go to this bar, and she steps in the door, and the poor mama, the the lady, the the, the bar owner, has a meltdown because she. One apparently has never met her, but was like like one of her super fans. And she came in and she's all calm and collected. And the mom the mom just like starts crying and she's like holding her. It was really sweet and wholesome. My favorite I, part I, is also the 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 salary man customer just like just mind is like, uh, yeah. He's like says I, I haven't been in this barn like like you know a year and it's my first yeah. time back in here. It's like wow shit. He Oscar shows out, up. Man. He liked that. It was a fun night for everyone involved. Yeah. Go watch that on her on Asuka's uh, Kana TV. Uh, yeah, Kana Chan TV, y'all. It it's is good. if you want to learn more about Asuka and her life in the United States, she documents it very well. Yes, she big but gamer. If you see her in public, she, leave her alone. Don't be she, weird. She she likes uh she likes driving her. I think she drives a very nice uh, expensive SUV. She likes driving uh, that. I, it, think, I believe so. it is either a Lexus or a Mercedes. It's yes, one of those. Well. It's, it's something a WWE wrestler it, with it, a, a she, degree of success can it, afford. In her defense, she's earned it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's she's making good bank and fuck it. She deserves that, that's it. That's why she's a part of me still hopes Okada goes there because he will, he will be paid so well. <laughs> 
Again, you know, everyone's saying, like, they think it's AW. Okay, I know. we'll see. I know. I, I'm not going to say that's where I think he's going anymore. I'm just going to say I, that's where I, I hope he's going because I think he will be utilized the best there. I, and, I just think it'll be easier on his body in the long term. They're not, like, they, they, they may expect great matches out of him, but they're not going to expect o Okada versus Omega Okada every single night in every single Listen, day. Kenny's, pay Kenny's now paying the price for those matches. I'm well, sorry to but, say, but I don't want Okada to go through the same no, thing. If neither do I. Me, especially with with both Kenny and Ibushi and what, what they're all both going through. Yes, I don't exactly. want I don't want to see any more people going through that. If your if your body is is breaking down, listen to your body, please. It's I know like you know your body better me, than anybody else, but please. You know, it's like Rich Fan told me, Karen is like, who's on the horn with them? Who's his best friend in in America? You know, from New Japan, it's Shinsuke Nakamura, bro. I surf every week. They they don't, don't use me for months on end. I still got a job, and I got a pretty good fucking downside. It's pretty good over here. <laughs> you know that's yeah, what he's he, telling him. He, he surfs on weekdays in Florida, which it means the beaches are wide open, so he doesn't get bothered, which is great. Like he gets to go surf wherever he wants, and you know, go home from Orlando. A, a, there's a beach in every direction within an hour. And then what? What? what, what who's talking to him? In, in aw the young bucks yeah man you can you know look at look what we're doing with Takeshita. nothing there you go anyways let's let's do some quick notes uh about things in and around uh, <laughs> ninja fan uh show your boy show finally won the junior heavyweight title on a count out that that, that me and my damn monkeys paul we, we've been over this it should not have been like this this should not have been the show that got the junior title. It should have been 2021 show should have got the title. Not this way. Uh, but in relation to that, his former I am partner, I am sad. yo, uh, stole the title belt. Yeah, so I guess did. we're, we're, I guess we're seeing the V one between uh, Mr. Denim uh, yo versus uh, Mr. Uh, you know, shit wrestler uh, show uh, I, for I'm a title. Guessing. No one cares about. I'm guessing it might be at Sakura Genesis because that's the next big pay per view after the New Japan Cup. Um, but yeah, that's where the direction's going. Um, I I hope that Yo picks a new fashion ensemble. I'm not I'm not a fan of the Canadian tuxedo that he's been rocking for a very long time now. Listen, I, I take great umbrage <laughs> with that phrase because I would never ever wear that, and I am. You wouldn't wear it to the uh, Waffle House. I am. I a, mean, I know. you don't wear to the, You know what I'm wearing to the fucking Waffle House? Oh yeah, that's what I'm wearing to the Waffle House with with members of the Stardom roster for the time being. Uh huh. Yeah. At my table. Sure. That's right. Don't worry, Karen. We'll sure. send you. We'll 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 tag you on Instagram yeah, when those pictures bastard. emerge. <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, what else did we can we talk about? We talk about you know night two of New Beginning. Saw the the. The, the 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 farewells of both Kazuchika Okada and Tamatanga, who is now officially really, w I think so. I think I read it on postwrestling.com that he is now officially WWE bound. He will be well, joining. Good for him. He will be joining WWE. I I imagine he'll probably start off in NXT for for a while and then um be brought up to main roster to do who knows what. Um, we'll see. We'll see what what the future holds for Tamatanga, well, what his new name him. will be in in WWE. But uh, also, final note as we move into our kind of preview of the New Japan Cup, Naito Tetsuya Naito, the current IWGP World Heavyweight Title holder, defended against your boy, former champ Sonata, yep, and and sure now did. he will he will face the winner of New Japan Cup. Before that, Karen, though, he's gonna face. Show in a match, and he said if he if he loses to show, he will vacate the world heavyweight title. So I do not think he's. You know, I mean, like first of all, the heavyweight champion never loses to the junior heavyweight champion. So, um, but I don't think he's losing. He's vacating the title before you know it's a current genesis. So <laughs> I. 
I hope they don't have it because he also has that match with Moxley in Chicago on the 12th of April at Windy City Riot. I think the folks in Chicago will be pissed if Naito shows up after losing to House of Torture shenanigans at the anniversary show and doesn't get his belt back. Um, I could see Sho stealing the heavyweight championship and trying to hide it from him, but or evil. Um, but yeah, that's a that's a thing. I I will be doing the report for post on the anniversary show. I'm a little nonplussed about it, but the the card is not. It, I feel like in previous years, the anniversary show was, it wasn't like the new Japan cup wasn't woven into it. It was a standalone show, which is like a celebration of like the year ahead and the year of the past and what, and like legacy and history. And just, it just feels like another house show with minus the match between show and Naito. Right. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. Well, and, 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 uh, before we get to the new Japan cup, Karen, we'll, yep. uh, let's talk about a kind of a cool development happened recently with uh, Zack Sabre jr. He yeah. uh, appeared on a DDT show, uh, uh on February 25th at Cork and hall. And he announced that he, uh, no, sorry. They're going to, like, yes, they, he appeared on the February 25th DDT Cork and hall show to announce that he's going to team up with uh, one of his friends who is a wrestler in DDT. That is Chris Brooks. And they will team up to face um, uh, the top stars of DDT, Yuki, Yuki Ueno and Mao, in a tag team match that will take take place at Corken Hall on April seventh. And I, I think that's really ni- neat that that he like he's going to go over there and and hang out with with uh, his buddy Chris uh, Chris Brooks there. And uh, yeah, I you know. I, I- uh, what, what do you think about this? I, I'm hoping to uh, be able to catch this on Russell Universe that I have a subscription to. Uh, yeah, me too. I, I love that Chris has found his own footing in Japan, both with working with DDT and doing his own thing. Like he runs his own little like monthly uh, shindy, as it were, in Shim- Sh- Shimokitazao called Baka Gaijin, which basically is st- is called Stupid Foreigner Wrestling, and it's basically like all his friends that work in DDT and other indies and like a Choco pro. And they just do like basically wrestling in a bar with like some floor mats. Um, If you watch those live streams that are on YouTube, they're free by the way. Um, You will see uh, friends of Chris Brooks in the audience. Not me, not a friend of Chris Brooks. I don't know him, but like other uh, people that may work in the same company, including one Zachary Sabre jr. Yeah. They 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 really like the like the foreign guys that are in Japan, especially in, in, in that work in Tokyo regularly. They usually go out and support, which I think is so awesome because yeah. they know that working really hard, but forging his own path in his own way. Nice guy. I've met Chris. Yeah. Nice guy. He's lovely. So I'm, I'm glad that he's found the success working for a company. I think suits his his philosophy of of pro wrestling, and yeah. you know, kudos to him. He he came he you know came before the pandemic. He stayed instead of going back to the UK. He yeah. stayed. I think the best thing he ever did. Same thing with like Zach. Like he's very similar to Zach in that way. Like yeah. Zach stayed. He didn't decide to leave. Um, you know, and uh, I think he really benefited from it. But uh, from that, you know, n- like I said, we talked about Naito. He's gonna face the winner of the New Japan Cup, probably where at Secure Genesis. Yeah, yes. I believe it. Yes, Secure Genesis, which is on uh, April sixth. April 6th. So we're going to talk about what's going to happen for New Japan in March, which is basically the same thing as essentially the, the, the Cinderella tournament for starting. Well, New Japan has their version of the Cinderella tournament. It's called the New Japan Cup. It is running basically concurrently to this. This yeah. is so dumb, in my sure opinion. Is. Uh, March it, sucks. 6th, it sucks for me, but... Uh, March 6th to March 20th will be the New Japan Cup. And uh, Karen, do you want to go through the 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 at least the first round here, and then we'll talk about our predictions for who the winner would be, and uh, yeah, and who who will be the f- people in the finals? Let, okay. Let's let's please go ahead. Looking at the first bracket, which I believe based on your list here is the left side of the bracket. Uh, in the first round, Yoshihashi will face Kenta, with the winner advancing to face Sonata. Uh, then Shota Umino will have his long-awaited uh, grudge match against J- Jack Perry. Who, from, By the who way, may or, who may or may not still be in AEW, but By also making his New Japan deba- debut. <laughs> Jack Perry, you can't fucking put Hiromu or fucking Desperado as a heavyweight, but you're gonna push Jack Perry as a fucking heavyweight. Give me a break. <laughs> Anyways, don't continue, get, please. Don't get me started. Uh, <laughs> 
the, 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 I'm sure this is gonna be John Pollock's favorite match of the entire tournament is Toriyano versus Yujiro Takahashi. Uh, TJP will be making his heavyweight debut against David Finley. That will actually be a pretty good match, which they just had, um, at Battle in the Valley. They had a singles match that was non title. Uh, Tangalo versus Great Okan, Ishii versus Chase Owens, and then the winner of that match will face Hiroki Goto in the second round. On the right side of the bracket, we've got uh, Hikuleo versus Bolton Oleg, who is making his debut in the tournament. The winner of that match will face Evil. And then Callum Newman, who also could be in Best of the Super Juniors, but that's neither here nor there, versus Gabe Kidd. Uh, Shingo Takagi versus Yuya Uemura. Yoda Tsuji versus Jeff Cobb. Woo, that's going to be a good one. Uh, El Phantasma versus Mikey Rick- Nichols. Taichi versus Ren Narita with the winner facing Zack Sabre Jr. I can't wait to see that uh, Taichi uh, Zack uh, tag team partners facing each other match. Woo-hoo-hoo. My heart, my, 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 my dangerous ticker's heart may not be able to handle it. All right. So we're not going to go through each bracket or who's going to beat who, but um, Karen, do you have a prediction who you think will be in the finals? So. My 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 New Japan Cup twenty four safe bet is Zack Saber Jr. or David Finley versus Great Okan. But I think Great Okan and Finley are on the same side of the bracket. That, that there's no really they cancel each other out. I think. Uh, uh no, they are on opposite. They, they are on. Yeah, Okan and Finley are on the same side. So one of them versus Zach, uh, would be my oh. my 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 preferred one. But with my luck, it'll be David Finley or Sonata versus Evil. <laughs> that's I, I i i know what i want but i don't know if new japan is gonna be brave enough to give it to me um i would l- again if david finley losing the global he- heavyweight championship this early and they don't have a plan for him this needs to be the plan um yeah so but- david finley and zach are in the same are in the same bracket oh are they are oh. no like so uh if i'm looking at my notes uh, no david finley is taken on TJP in the left bracket, okay. and uh, and Zach's on and, the right on and, the right hand side. And, and Great Okan is facing Tangaloa in the left bracket, yeah. and then okay. Zach is facing the winner of Tai Chi versus Renderita in the right bracket. So, okay. believe it or not, folks, Karen and I are on the same wavelength for this as well. Because my prediction <laughs> is Zach Saber Jr. will face the Great Okan in the finals of the New Japan Cup, and I'm going to say he is going to repeat as a New Japan Cup winner. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, and listen, okay, you know, David Finley, global heavyweight champion, push the shit out of this dude, okay? Thank you. Okay, but you know what? You know who should be the heavyweight fucking champion? Zach. Uh, Zach Saber, Saber Jr. He's yes. fucking earned it. They yes. love him. They will accept him. They will buy, pay money to see him they as the champion. Wait- they have been waiting for him. They have been waiting a very fans, long time for him. The fans want to see it and honestly you put the great okan in the finals because it's time for this fucking guy to get pushed yes. and i am a big supporter of fucking shoot style great okan as you yes. well know from my from from our new japan uh g1 climax reviews this yes. guy when he wants to be a wrestler holy fuck he is a pretty good fucking wrestler i don't mind the character if he's if that but if that's just him to get to the fucking ring and to start the match, and then he turns on the wrestler. Yeah. Jeez, fuck! Give me that and Zack Saber Jr. in the heavyweight mix, and then start bringing everyone else up, okay? Yes, to that level, and then you can make TMDK the top faction in your Please. company because chaos is fuck now, especially with Okada gone. Just fucking uh, end it. Just fucking yeah. end chaos. Get rid of the bullet club. Get rid of the bullet club. Just call it the War Dogs. Yes, and don't make House of Torture part of it. How about that? Yes, correct. <laughs> Anyways, that's that's our New Japan Cup prediction. S- Zach and 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 Okan in the finals, but you know, barring Okan, I'm gonna say uh, Zach and and David Finley in the finals. And if even that I, happens, I, would, I still I, would love that. I still think Zach's gonna win it because yeah. I, I I think David Finley he he should he should get a big push. <laughs> but you know what? Who needs a who I think now, like in reflection, like you know, before when we talked about Dave Finley, that was in my mind. But now, 
Oh, yeah. Now we're actually getting to the, the notes I made. Yeah. Zach has to be the fucking guy. And he he he's he he's earned it in the sense like he has established himself as a fucking star in the eyes of these fans and and, and in the world because like the stuff he's done with Danielson recently mm-hmm. getting more eyeballs on him and they're probably like fuck who's this guy if you never know who if you never seen Zack Saber Jr. before and you followed him because like he had the matches with Danielson now you fucking know who he is and now you're gonna be like oh shit I want to follow <laughs> I want to see what this guy's fucking doing in Japan and he has the ability to be a top level star like I think he should have been pushed to that level along with at concurrently with Osprey. But that's Correct. neither here nor there. Okay. Yes. But, um, but that's it. That's it for for what we're we're gonna we're gonna talk about on on this month here on Post Perez. Karen, do you do you have anything? Any final thoughts on anything that we talked about or or, or new topic? Uh, Tanahashi got removed from the New Japan Cup, and he got removed from Sakura Genesis because of the ankle injury that happened during his TV match. Um. Uh, if Finley or Zach don't win the New Japan Cup, mark them for the G One. Because if Zach doesn't win the, if Zach could win the New Japan Cup again, but you know I'd rather him win the G One because he he's gotten close before, but he hasn't done it. Um, and then their New Japan is having their first show in Taiwan, uh, on April fourteenth at Wrestling World. I don't know what Wrestling World is, but it looks like a, it looks like a good time. I'm curious to know which talents they're going to be sending because depending on global travel the day after Windy City Riot. I don't know if the whoever works Windy City Riot will be able to get to Taiwan in time. Um, so it might be a, a not sending the entire roster sort of situation. And then uh, that's about it. Other than, you know, anniversary shows coming up. I don't know if you want to do a quick run through of all those matches or no. it, it's it's really not that exciting. Basically, if it's not a first round New Japan Cup match, it's a it's a preview tag with Naito and show. And I literally wrote my notes. I hate it here. (laughs) Uh, I will say this about the G1 very quickly, Karen. Like, I think because he has history with the New Japan cup that Zach should win it again. And this is, and this is where this propels him into becoming heavyweight champion. And what do you do with, what do you do with Finley then with Finley? He can go to the finals of the new Japan of, of the, of the G1. Right. I don't I, I, I don't think, you know, like and I, I'm a big support. I've been a big supporter of Dave Finley pretty much since the day he, he joined the company. Oh, yeah, me too. Um, I'm not questioning that. This is nothing against David Finley. Um, but I think G1 should be Okan or 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 Yoda CG. I think one of those yeah. guys should sure. win, should win the whole fucking thing. And I think it's I think. Yoda CG is more of more of like you know marketable than Great Okan. I think Great Okan should be in the heavyweight mix and like the main event mix. But like if you're gonna make you know the the winner of of the G1 go to the challenge for you know Wrestle Kingdom in the main event, yeah. then I think that's better off. And and Yoda CG has to be the guy that you. I think he has more more of it than than yeah. Shota Umeda does, and he's the one I would build now the company, the future of the company around this guy along with david finley um great o'con jeff cobb and zach saber jr that those are my picks to build around with you know support in that upper echelon from people like el phantasmo shigo takagi still and and like you know uh yuya umura not fucking jack perry by the way god anyways and and liberate show and ren narita hit the reset switch on them and you know. Hiromu Takashi and fucking El Desperado in the as heavyweight heavyweights. Division. If if TJP can go heavyweight, so can Hiromu and Despi. That's all Anyways. I gotta say. If you want to support either myself or Karen, go to Chop Tees. Okay, Chop Tease. slash Tees dot com. Get get the MCU later shirt. Get the best selling long and winding rural road four pillars. You know merchandise. The five pillars merchandise. The post Perez merchandise. Is that's doing well again. But also, you know what? You care, care, go, go support Karen. Get this fuck. <laughs> look at this hoodie. Jesus Christ, that thing's beautiful. Don't be, don't be fooled by it. If you're American, don't be scared by the sixty-five dollar. Okay, that's it's that's it's Canadian. Okay, but with that, you get free shipping in most countries. Okay, we love pay. free. So if you think about shipping these days, it's pretty fucking expensive to ship something from anywhere. So 
you're, you're saving on shipping. So it's included with the price of the merchandise. It's a great bargain. Okay. It's a beautiful then, design. Whoever I know the the person who who designed this wants to remain anonymous, but listen, it if you're listening, me, it kills me that they want to remain anonymous because I want to throw all of my money at them. So I listen, so I, I want to tell you if you're listening, this is beautiful. If, I love you know, it. It's I great. It so you should mention. It. I was like, holy shit, that's 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 uh, fantastic. When 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 Dickie sent it to me, I actually started crying because basically he just had the the name. A little bit, little bit of info about me, and sent it to them, and they they came up with that with no prompting from me. I looked at it, and I'm like, it's perfect. It's it who is. I am. It's um, it's something I I I could wear, and not you know I I like stuff that doesn't make identifying me necessarily as a wrestling fan. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yes, you you probably would be you do wrestling podcasts. It's like it's different to go out in the yeah. street and and wear wrestling gear that makes you look like a wrestling fan. Yeah. No, I you know. Anyways. And for those who who who, who prefer the, the the zip up hoodie, uh, the zip up hoodie is available with the print with the image on the back. So you, you, uh, you so looking from the front, you can't really see it, but then you turn around like, what's this beautiful design? Because I, I I wanted the it on a hoodie just because, and this is the kimono nerd in me, because if like where it would be on your back is pretty much if you were to, oh, in a women's kimono, that's where the 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 uh, the back yeah, of the. So here we be. go. Here we go. Let's uh let's bring it up here. The, 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 the zip hoodie back print. So click it over to the I one so you can down. see how see how it stands out more. There you go. Uh, there it is. There you, go. there you go. Okay. So there you go. It looks very nice. So people, chop teas, okay? Go go it's, it's go co go it's support. Cozy season, get cozy. But like wait for Listen, spring because it's spring. There's perfect. there's there's Karen. There's myself and my multitude of podcasts, but there's also post wrestling stuff, Poison Rana stuff, John Ceno, he's got shot in the dark, and What Up Doe stuff up there. Um, the 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 you know the the my my good friend Martin Bushby doing Eagles don't you know Eagles don't hunt flies. They got like mugs. I'm hoping for a fucking mug, Karen. Like Dicky, I I, I want I want a mug too. <laughs> where's my mug? I want, I want a mug. Listen, you know who wants a mug of both our our brands, Karen, Neil fucking Flanagan, their man Neil. Our man he says, Neil. WH, love I Neil. want I I love coffee mugs. Where's my where's my where's my L and W R R coffee mug WH? I go fucking you listen, you're in DMs with fucking Dicky. Talk to fucking Dicky. Yes. Anyways, you know, everyone just just go fucking D, you know, just tweet him and, and fucking say, we want empress coffee mugs we want l and w r r post perez mcu later coffee mugs and it'll fucking happen you know what i'm saying anyways we're gonna wrap it up with that with the with the plug of the merchandise which by the way <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll not be ending with this episode we'll be plugging this fucking merchandise all the fucking time <laughs> anyways uh, i want to say uh thank you to karen's mom for uh you know saying hi to me She's a big fan of me, right? She, 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 you are part of her monthly uh, crochet and knitting routine. When post pro res drops, she puts That's it right. on. She has her That's coffee right. with WH Park. That's right. Me, she sees all the time. She doesn't care about me. She's always like, tell WH I say hello. What's your mom's name again? Lise. Like, like L I S E. So, Lise. Yes. Like, like not like, Lisa. No, Lise. She's Quebec. Well, she was, she's from Montreal. So she, oh. it's, it's Yes, I am half Canadian, believe it or not. Uh, but yeah, we don't because you never show up here, Karen. You never come by, come by visit us here in Toronto. Uh, you know hey, what I'm saying? If people buy more merch, I might be able to afford a plane there ticket. Go, to go. There you go. <laughs> go visit there you go. Toronto and meet everybody in person. Yeah, John Cena. That means you buy some fucking merch. Wait, I think he John's already bought some. some. Thank you. He's, he's already bought some, hasn't he? <laughs> he beat you to it. He beat me to it. I'm gonna get some. Just I, 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 I've had a lot of bills recently. What can I say? Hey, I get it. In this economy, I have to. I have to. I have to buy merch for the time. for the artists who have designed my merch. So I have to, you know, I have to buy stuff for them. So don't worry, Karen. That's fair. You, you, you. One, one of these shows, you will see me in an Empress T-shirt or something. Okay, don't worry. About I, I, I hope so. It's the goal. Chill out. Calm down. No, I will never <laughs> calm down. <laughs> postwrestling.com uh dream slam monthly see I, I i remembered it dream slam monthly karen's gonna tell you how to watch the hannah kimura memorial show on streaming because she she's on top of all that shit 
uh, post Perez. We'll be we'll be back actually early April because we're gonna we, you know post WrestleMania week. We'll we, Karen and I will be talking about the start of show that that I will have gone to live. I'll talk about Waffle House with Shuri and members of God's Eye. You know. Yep. You know, just we'll keep, get it. Just, you know, just, just keep saying it's gonna happen. Maybe you'll manifest. Listen, it. we manifested this fucking this fucking merchandise, Karen. <laughs> All right, uh, well, long someday. and winding road. The new episode will be coming out soon with myself and one of your another one of your favorites, Karen Je- John John Paul Houlihan from Grapple. We'll Jake. be doing. We're, we're doing yes. the show. Uh, good man, good man. Uh, MCU later. We'll be we'll be uh, doing. Uh, we're get, we're gonna announce something. I think you know. Way contacted me today, asking if I wanted to do something, review something. Oh. So we're, we're gonna we're we're still debating it. We're just so it's in the planning stages. So myself, Rich fan, may, maybe some guests, maybe John Cena is finally gonna. Well, he's actually been on MC later. Actually, I, that's I should say finally. But but uh, something Cena might might be involved with as well. So. Um, we're looking forward to announcing that, but you know, MC you later. Like, if you miss it, just get the fucking sweater, man, or the t shirt. Anyways, Karen, thank you so much for your time. As always, the Empress gracing us uh, with her presence, with her fucking knowledge, fucking educating I, us all. I do what I can. Myself, uh, you know, just shit talking as usual. But, anyways. We we appreciate all the listeners who 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 support us who 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 like still listen to 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 to, to us and even though we're we're so angry sometimes <laughs> it's all it's all good because people like sometimes they just want to hear people be angry on on the podcast the, gr- the grumpiness is good intentioned grumpiness we want better for these people this is that's why right. we feel, it's why we feel the way we feel that's it, right yes, Desperado Hiromu. I don't care if you want to be doing yourself. Fuck you. Uh, you're going to heavyweight. Anyways, for Karen Peterson, I'm David H. Park, postwrestling.com. And until next time, we will say goodbye. Bye.